Welcome to DJN TV and Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe. Now introducing the one and only Ben Stowe. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. I know you're waiting. You've been sitting there for the whole week and you're thinking, gosh, I can't wait for Tuesday night. It's not because you love tacos or anything that starts with T. What you're really wanting is something that starts with B. Bre Technology bre starts with T. Breakfast? No. Bagels. Ooh, I like breakfast. I do like breakfast. <sighs> there isn't an ice cream that starts with B. Is there Blue Bunny? That's uh, that's a brand. One of our avid viewers works at Blue Bunny. Oh, well, then it, then it works. We'll just say that that's what it is. We're back. It's Tuesday night with Ben Stowe. And tonight... We're going to be hitting a variety of different topics. We kind of change things up just a little bit because, well, there's some there's an event coming up here in Minneapolis that we want to make sure we talk about tonight. And and tonight's really about learning. That's what tonight is really going kind of our our, our fallback. Because today well, you man, really set the bar high there. <laughs> today, man, I was I was digging through some stuff and I found your oh, high yeah. school video. I mean, seriously, that picture, you guys can't really see it that well. If you were maybe 17 at the time, I mean, let's face it. Can you see it? There you go. <laughs> it was only a few years ago. It was just a couple of years ago. Well, first off, that there's a, a round circular thing in here that you would put into a device, and then it makes this thing happen your t on your TV. And they didn't call it streaming. A thing you put into a thing to watch a thing. Uh, to watch a thing, yeah. So... So for those who have never heard of the the Geek Boot Camp uh, a DVD here that I that I found today, that was one of your your early um, putting together some educational content for the industry, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, no, I, uh, it it's been a pretty fun journey when you think about it. I think I've probably been doing seminars and teaching and writing and and probably 25 years i mean it was just a good round number but it's it's probably not far off um and i think it actually started when uh somebody said you know you're answering a lot of my questions all the time and my group would like to have you answer all their questions all at once so yep. i think it started with a you know, I, I don't remember what presentation was my first presentation, but it started with that. And then another presentation and then another presentation. And then, you know, would you write for our magazine or would you write for our newspaper or, you know, and then um, that kind of led to the to the DVDs. I think the first DVD came out 2009. Okay. And Geek Boot Camp was actually the second one. And it was pretty wild because these things got picked up by a publishing company and they, they were distributed in, you know, Best Buy and Amazon and Guitar Center. And, you know, in 2009, that was pretty wild that this mm. would be, uh, it was distributed in something like 19 countries. And so suddenly, you know, overnight, you know, whatever. But anyway, uh, yeah, so it's. Geek Boot Camp was probably 2011, so it does seem like quite a while ago now. And, and ironically, it is still on Amazon. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm sure I'm still getting my royalties like 25 <laughs> cents here and 30 cents there. Yeah, exactly. It's like you're just burning up, burning things up there with that. But uh, yes, uh, for those of you who are, if you're interested here, I'll put a... Uh, I'll put a link into the uh, the chat here that uh, you guys can check out. But yes, this is on Amazon. I'll do you one better. I'll do you one better, everybody. Not to begrudge Amazon or the publisher or anybody, because uh, the, officially the publisher is no longer carrying DVDs. So this isn't hurting anybody here. In fact, we can help some people. I've got uh, several copies that uh, I bought from the publisher when they said we're not going to do DVDs anymore. I said fine. I'll take. I'll. I'll buy the remaining stock. Um, and kind of what I had in mind to do with it and I haven't got around to it. So I guess we're doing it right now. Yes. I'm just making, like, is if, if you want one of these DVDs, uh, if you will send a free will donation to the homeless shelter that I used to live in and you can send it to me and I'll give it to them. That's fine too. I'll send you a DVD for free. So, okay. So that? you have, you've got multiple options now that are in the chat. So first off you can, you could get a hold of Ben and do that. Or, you could go to the uh, the link for the same price that Amazon wants for it. Actually, a little cheaper, I think. Uh, you can go to the NLFX page. You can buy it there and get the free T-shirt. That's true. We do have the Geek uh, The Geek, geek T-shirt. Uh, so pack, it's cheaper yeah. on the NLFX Pro page, and you can get the T-shirt. Or you can make a donation and, uh, and, and go that route. 
it's a win. Is that something you win. could facilitate, John? I, mean, I realize we're having this conversation, like, you know, live in front of everybody, you know, recorded for posterity, but I've got, I don't know, maybe a thousand copies left. Um, is that something that Disc Jockey News wants to facilitate? Well, we could, I, I just want these, you know, at this point, they're, they've been around a while. The content isn't, isn't yeah, it's, it's, the content's still relevant. And they come with a little handy little guide inside some thing. But anyway, I just, at this point, I know nobody has a DVD player anymore, you know, so I, I get that. So, you know, if we can figure out a way for these to get into people's hands where they're going to do some good and we can make a, a donation to the Evergreen House is the name of the shelter, you know, in the name of just Jockey News or whatever, that would make me happy. I would be happy to see these get into people's hands and get yeah. the money into the, uh, which by the way, you know, I don't know if I, I don't know if we had this conversation. Uh, you and I, of course, recently both uh, were just um, inducted into the inaugural class of the MEX Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I recently uh, went back to the shelter where I started this career, and I got to go back to my old, old, my own old room and sit on my old bed, my own old bed, wherever it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think it's the same bed from 30 years ago, too. I don't think they've... I don't think we changed the bed. I don't know. But anyway, what a surreal moment to sit there with that coffee can uh, back there, that light that was made out of coffee cans to sit in my old room in the shelter and think about life as a teenager and, you know, wondering, I sure didn't think I'd be sitting here, you know, uh, an expert in the field and helping people grow and develop in the field and, you know, friends with people like you. I, I didn't, I don't think I foresaw any of that, you know, really. I mean, I'll be, I'll be honest, I didn't even know what I was going to eat the next day. So I really wasn't thinking that far down the road. You know? Right. And, and that, that's actually kind of, I was, I was just going to ask about that. Is that, that commonness when a person is, you know, they talk about that hierarchy. Um, as, we're going to get a little deep here, the Maslow's uh, uh, pyramid of hierarchy. Let her rip. Let her do um, it, yeah. But when you're in a situation like that and you're not sure where the next meal is coming from or you don't have the shelter and the say, I mean, what, what is going through as someone who is there? What's going through your mind during that time frame as far as, is it a, a, oh my gosh, what, what's going to happen tomorrow? Or is it something that it's like life is like a week at a time, or is it literally a day at a time? Yeah, it's maybe shorter than a day at a time. Mm. Uh, I think living in the shelter gave me a lot of comfort because I knew where I was going to sleep. Uh, and I knew that I had meals there. So it gave me the stability necessary to uh, pursue the career. You know, if you're expending all of your energy, um, you know, with, with, uh, you know, drama or with just trying to find a place to sleep or trying to find, a, you know, something to eat, uh, you don't have a lot of energy left to try to do anything else. So I think the shelter was really, really beneficial in that regard that, you know, but it's still, it, it, it took care of the basics of life, mm-hmm. but I think there was a lot that was unknown. I mean, certainly I, I, I don't know, you know, I know Howie and I have a similar story and, you know, we've talked about this a little bit, uh, but, it's pretty demoralizing to be homeless, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, for me, it was anyway. And, you know, so I was, th- a lot of things were really uh, up in the air, a lot of chaos, you know, like, w- w- what was I going to do? You know, certainly you can't look down the road and say, hey, 30 years from now, I'm going to have a great family and a beautiful wife and, you know, a great career and a lot of friends in the industry and be well regarded. You're just really thinking like, how do I get out of this mess? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, how do I get, how do I get out of here? You know? And I think you're willing to settle for, you know, anything. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously I was driven and obviously I wanted more, you, you know, but uh, when I got my first apartment and I literally had no furniture, you know, I was still thrilled because it was a step forward, you know, right. so you really I think you think about things in very small steps, maybe um, at the same time, you know, obviously had a high, uh, we'll call them hopes. You know, I didn't have a grand plan to say, hey, we're going to create this multi-million dollar enterprise. And that just wasn't in the cards. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm just being honest. Uh, so I think it's very short thinking, very like, you know, a lot. I was, I was talking right. to the executive director of the shelter. I, you know, I said, you know, I can't tell you how many nights I laid in that bed and stared at that ceiling. And it's a very plain ceiling, by the way. The rooms are pretty plain, you know, <laughs> and uh, I just, you know, really contemplated the existence and the cosmos and all of that, like, you know, what, what, what is happening right now? You know, I mean, I don't know. So how, how easy is it when you get to the point like that, that uh, they talk about, you know, obviously depression becomes part of this, this equation uh, when you're in that situation, but um, to play, to, to feel like a victim of circumstance, is that, is that something that you felt uh, affected you? I think I probably felt every emotion during that time. I think it's, a, you know, I mean, 
I think you, <laughs> you know, I think, I think at one point you feel every emotion, you know, you're angry, you're sad, you're hopeful, you know, you're defeated, you know, I mean, I think every range of emotion goes through your mind. And I think, sure, absolutely. At times you can, you know, you can say, you know, why is the world picking on me? Uh, why aren't things going my way? Uh, why do I get the bad breaks? But the truth is I've had a lot of great breaks. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, through the lens of history, you know, you just, but sure. I, I think at times I probably felt that way, but I, I think wrestling, ironically, you know, a sport I was in was maybe really good because in wrestling, if you get yourself in a jam, you can't call a teammate. I mean, you're the only guy out there from your team, you know, and that's mm -hmm. the way it is. If you get yourself in a jam, you have to get yourself out. And I think that was kind of, um, you know, it was kind of the mindset was like, well, if I'm getting out of this, uh, it's it's up to me. Now, that's not to say that it didn't have help. I had a lot of help. You know, I mean, it would be unfair and disingenuous to say that I didn't have help. I had a lot of wonderful mentors and things, but ultimately it's kind of like coaches and teammates. At the end, you still have to do the thing. You have to walk the walk, you mm -hmm. know? Hmm. That's, Which that's, is why I went back, uh, truthfully. That's yeah. why I went back. Uh, it was not for me so much. I think it was a little bit, but... I, I told the executive director, I said, I don't know how many hundreds of kids have slept in this room in this bed and thought maybe the things that I thought I said, but I want them to know what, where this room can lead. Right. You know, I want them to know that you can be regarded uh, well in your community and in your industry. Uh, you can, I mean, really the sky is the limit. You know, there's a ceiling in this room that undoubtedly they stared at too, but above that ceiling is the sky and that's the limit. Mm hmm. Yeah, such a such a, a a difficult time to be going through, especially as a teenager, when there's all these other things going on in one's, you know, just these years of those teen years. And then to put that on top of it is uh, that's a lot. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. a lot. The good news is, you know, I was a teenager, so I still knew everything. So, no, you know, well, I was all, you had that going you, for you. <laughs> if you have to be homeless, that's the time to do it. I think. Uh, <laughs> that's right. Um, I just put the link for the uh, Evergreen House. If you guys wanted to go check it out and uh, and, and want to do something there, uh, the link is in the chat there. You guys can go check that out. And and um, if that if you feel so inclined and you've learned something from us on a Tuesday night and want to make a donation, please do. And then you can pop that uh, pop that over to uh, to either Ben or myself, and we'll uh, make sure you get a DVD uh, sent out to you because they're talking about that they can play it in our gaming systems. So and it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's all kinds. Of, you know, I'm sure yeah. there's a way you can get an optical drive. But, you know, again, at the end of the day, even if you just stick the thing on the shelf, I, you know. Uh, so, yeah, I don't we didn't obviously didn't think this through. I know this was not the topic for tonight. I'm totally going rogue here. But, yeah. you know, if, if you want to make a donation directly to the Evergreen House, uh, that's fine. Just uh, tell me that you did. Uh, 622 Mississippi is uh, the shelter address, but they have a new office address now. I think it might be easier if you know maybe they send them send all the funds to you john or to me and we just facilitate one donation whatever I'm sure uh, ebony warren is the director there i'm sure she would thrill, be thrilled to get a bunch of you know checks but <laughs> yeah <laughs> might yeah. be easier if we just do it uh you know yeah and it, it, either way they've got it i've got a nice uh, easy spot to do it online too Oh, so, well, Mazel Tov. Yeah, it's yeah. just uh, yeah if you yep. just tell me that uh i'll take the honor system if you say you did you know um uh, Whatever. Yeah. Doesn't... So you guys, your link is there. And uh, for those of you who uh, first time hearing hearing of this, uh, you know, it's it's all because of the cream corn can light. I think it was actually a coffee can, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're, they're pretty. You know, I, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't a dummy. Right. You know, like, it, you know, coffee used to come in metal cans mm -hmm. and and churches went through a lot of coffee so that's i went i went around to the local churches and i said look i need your coffee cans. yeah exactly folgers i was able to make a lot of lights in a very short order for folgers for the win right there that's for sure absolutely um, yeah. so so i want to talk about of course the upcoming show you guys have got coming in minneapolis but before we get to that this is this is where i wanted to kind of hit a little bit about uh, some of the gear a couple of gear things that have come up this week uh First off, there was a, a new controller that was uh, really getting around uh, this past week uh, from NAM, uh, from the, the Hercules company. And mm -hmm. it came back to that uh, our discussion on, on uh, controller to mixer. Now, it, typically what we've been talking about is controllers that did not have a, a, uh, an XLR output to go to your speakers. Now, this particular one, I think, has got that. But the, the, the concern that I wanted, what I wanted to talk about is 
what happens when I need multiple microphones and the, the, the board doesn't have it? And, or the preamp. There's there's two different situations. And the one I wanted you to kind of touch on a little bit, Ben, is is the preamps in our controllers compared to the preamps in board the mixing boards that like a live band, you know, small band would use type of situation. There's a mm-hmm. difference between those two and kind of elaborate what those differences might be. Well, it's it's my feeling, uh, this is not a scientific test, but it's my feeling that the preamps in the live sound boards tend to sound better. Uh, and certainly they, uh, in almost every case, have more control with, you know, even a small EQ of some kind, you know, a high pass filter button or something. Um, so typically what, what I like to do, and, and if this is a topic that interests you viewers, uh, please go check out the video John and I did on that a couple weeks ago, three, four weeks ago, whatever it was. But uh, I would say plug the controller into the mixer. They've got, typically they've got line level stereo uh, inputs on the mixer, unbalanced usually. Uh, and uh, then you've got multiple mic inputs, depending on how many mic preamps that mixer has. And, and not only are you gonna expand the number of mics you can have coming in, but I think your mic's gonna sound better, frankly. Now the sounding better will be, there's the audio side of it and such that it just sounds better that way. But in regard to feedback, is there going to be a difference between feedback on using most likely, you know, the, the kind of an audio mixer compared to a controller? I think you've got more tools to deal with it. I don't, I wouldn't say that inherently one is going to be better than the other, uh, you know, but I think it's, you've got some EQ and things that, you know, are going to help you there. Good gain structure is really important uh, for fighting uh, feedback. So I, I would say it's going to benefit you, but it isn't just going to happen by magic per se. You use the term there, a gain structure. Now I've heard that uh, kind of talk, tossed around a little bit and I hear there's going to be a spot to learn more about that. But for those who are hearing gain structure for the first time, what is that concept? Oh gosh, it is probably the single most important thing um, in an audio signal chain. Uh, and if you don't do that well, everything else is going to be harder throughout the chain. Uh, basically, uh, to, to I'm trying to think of a really simple way to explain this. We're talking about because I mean, it's it's funny because it's a simple topic, but every time you say it, and that's why I started laughing right away when you brought it up. Every time you say it, people's eyes like roll back in their head and their heads start spinning around like they're possessed. Just like gang structure. Oh, it's like no, oh, it's actually it's actually simple. Yet it seems to be one of the things that I see that uh, people do poorly the most, mm-hmm. uh, which is why we dedicate a lot of time to it in the symposium, which is you're alluding to. Um, I would say in the simplest of terms, it's uh, maintaining a consistent voltage of the signal throughout the system. Uh, and I'll expand on that a little bit by saying every circuit has a maximum amount of voltage it can reproduce. Mm-hmm. Uh, and when you exceed that, the signal gets clipped off. And that's where the term clipping comes from. And every piece of gear has an inherent noise floor. The, uh, the hissing sound you hear, for example, right. that lives in every piece of electronic gear in some level. So we want that signal to have the highest ratio away from the noise floor that we can, uh, but not clip. And so... Uh, basically, it's a matter of structuring our gains. So there's where the term gain structure comes from throughout the system so that as we go from microphone and in the case of a wireless microphone, we might have a, uh, you know, we have we have some gain inside the transmitter that uh, takes the mic signal and preamplifies it before it modulates it onto the FM carrier or whatever. And then we've got another stage of gain at the receiver and then we've got a stage of gain at the microphone's preamp. And then we've got a fader, which uh, you know will either attenuate or boost the signal, depending on which side of the zero dB you're on. Then you've got a master, and then you've got any outboard processing, DSP, amplifier, so on and so forth. But we work our way always from the inputs to the outputs. So, so we're starting starting on the the input sides and working our way across. Now, when we're adding extra things, I mean, it's obviously every little piece of it you have to take into account for. You can't just Absolutely. Ignore a piece saying, oh, I always leave it there and then walk to go to the jump that because it may yeah, be. My, my favorite posts are when people say always, because that's, I mean, I've never seen an always that exists in engineering. <laughs> you know, if it was an always, the knob wouldn't move and the knob wouldn't even exist. You know, uh, if it was, it was, if it was beneficial to the manufacturers to not have to put that on there, they wouldn't, mm-hmm. uh, you know, every knob costs money. Right. So. Uh, yeah, you, you, you can't fix a problem later in the chain. If you create a problem early on, uh, you can't fix it later. You have to fix the problem at the source, um, which uh, 
Uh, th if you want to know more, uh, you got to come to the symposium. You got uh, no. There's the there's the pitch. There's, you there's pay the pitch. Uh, how can they find out information on this symposium? By the way, obviously we're going to be talking about that for much of the rest of the the show as we're hitting some gear questions and things that that have popped up. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find. There's no website for it. You know, it's funny that you say that because you're 100 percent right. Uh, we've sold out every symposium that we've done, and this is the 10th anniversary of it. And uh, we don't have any more planned after this. Um, that is not to say there won't ever, never be any more, but I, we're not planning on doing any more. We'll mm -hmm. just say that, right? Um, we, because they've always sold out, we didn't really devote our time or energy to a website. Sure. So, uh, but here we are three weeks from the uh, symposium and we have a few open seats. So I guess maybe we could have had one, but you know, uh, just contact me, I guess, and I can put you in touch with uh, my uh, the co-founder uh, who's handling the ticket sales. Uh, you know, it's going to be a great time. It's four really intense days. It's at the Electro Voice World Headquarters. We've got two days dedicated to lighting and video, two days dedicated to audio. Uh, we've got a, a fun night out planned, I think, at the Mall of America, which our host hotel is right across the street. Mm -hmm. So you can go every night if you want, uh, ride the roller coaster or whatever. And we've got a really cool fun night out uh that we uh did a few years ago we're going to bring it back for the 10th anniversary seems about right and that is a private night out at the legendary first avenue club in minneapolis where you know uh prince sang and recorded purple rain for the very first time in fact yeah. when he sang it that's when they recorded it and his band didn't even know what was going on they just knew they had a big expensive recording rig brought in so in front of a live audience they recorded purple rain and we actually have a we have a video of that that first performance that we're going to play on the screen there uh, at First Avenue. We're going to treat everybody to dinner. We're covering the cost of that. Um, so nice. that's, it's, yeah, we're going out with a bang, I think. So, oh yeah, P.S. We've also got really good education. Uh, four days, like I said, two, two days of video and lighting, two days of audio. We've got some uh, extraordinary presenters, some true absolute leaders in the field. Uh, and uh, every year uh, people's heads just melt, and I think it's great, which is why we do the fun thing to sort of let everybody kind of recuperate <laughs> a little bit at night. But what really blows me away every time is how many return attendees we have. Mm -hmm. To me, I think that shows a lot of value. I think I say, you know, wow, these people keep coming back. Uh, that's pretty cool, beyond cool. Plus, it's a really cool social event, I think. So I think I probably will miss doing it uh, if we don't do any more. Uh, but I'm not really thinking about, like I said, I'm not really thinking about whether we will or won't. I'm just thinking about this year right now. Yeah. So we'll get back to that. Uh, let's take a, let's, we got a question here from Sean. Um, it heard that certain uh, quarter antennas can't be remote mounted because they lack a ground plate or ground plane. Plane. Uh, it's not certain quarter antennas. It's all quarter antennas, basically, uh, because they're a monopole as opposed to a dipole. And you're correct, Sean. Uh, you, you What's a monopole to... and dipole? I mean, this is you're using, obviously, one's a single, one's a double. But what does that mean? Well, in the simplest of terms, uh, we'll go back to that ground plane. And the monopole, you know, mono means one, di means two, right? Like you said. So the monopole needs that ground plane or the... Um, metallic surface, if you will, of the receiver uh, in order to function correctly, whereas a half halfway, which is a dipole or an LPA, uh, you know, or any of the other non quarter wave antenna types, uh, they don't require that. Uh, so without getting into the super deep physics 401 of, you know, mono versus dipoles, I think we'll just say quarter waves need to be mounted to the receiver or to the antenna combiner or something that is electrically uh, connected to that and when you take and put it on the end of a cable on the outside of your rack or something like that that's a no-go can't do that uh, you're compromising the integrity of that antenna's ability to pick up the signal uh, whereas a half wave it's perfectly happy being mounted remotely you can stick it wherever you want uh, the only thing we have to worry about then is attenuation in the length of the cable you know the longer the cable the more signal we'll lose in the cable uh, but but sean you are correct so is the wire different between the the quarter if you were going to be if it's the same wire it's just that the quarter the quarter uh, uh, antenna does not yeah it just needs to be I was, I was looking around to see if i had a mic receiver in here and i don't but yeah uh, that was last, last week yeah. or the week before so <laughs> yeah I, I have a you know i have a lot of things around here but anyway <laughs> okay 
Um, so let's just jump back. By the to way, the, we're also going to cover wireless in the symposium. The, and, the, 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 we'll get. That's where I was oh heading back to. Oh, am I going to get ahead of myself? My overdoing. Yeah, you, you are. You are. I wanted to. Yeah. Um, some of the companies. We have like four seats open, and I want to. I want to fill them, man. So, so some of the companies that are there are. Is this single operator DJs? Is it multi system operator DJs? Is it live you know, production people? Who who's coming to the event? Uh, yes. <laughs> It's it's all of the above. We've had we've had several multi ops over the years that have sent people, uh, and and I'm sure we do again this year. Uh, obviously, a lot of single ops and uh, many people who are getting into or expanding into corporate AV and live production, uh, which is why we've got sessions on you know live mixing, compressors, gates, you know basic that sort of thing. Uh, we've got a, a section on Resolume. Uh, very excited. My friend uh, Jabril coming to uh, teach that. So things that are going to be really translatable to the uh, the corporate AV market. And then you've got people, uh, you know, like like Jeremy Martorano, who's just, uh, you know, uh, I mean, legendary in the field, really. Uh, the stuff he does for events are amazing. And it's interesting. I, I read comments in the forums. There's a question today about pricing up lights and things. And I was thinking about yeah, on the back end, probably, you know, you, you're accounting for each piece of gear, but, uh, you know, you're, you're selling the experience. You're selling that, you know, I don't think, you know, Jeremy's not, I don't know, but you'd have to ask him. Uh, I don't think he's giving out a bill of materials. I think he's saying, oh, it's 20 grand or it's 15 grand. You mm -hmm. know, make your room look awesome. And, and, and the stuff he does, I mean, you just got to see his presentation. Yeah. Uh, he's got one of the engineers from Chevet Lighting coming to teach Show Express. Uh, it's a class I've taught in years past, but why not teach a guy who, yeah. you know, knows behind the hood, under the hood more than I do. And then, of course, you know, we've got, uh, uh, you know, my friend uh, Brent Schmidt, uh, who's going to be uh, teaching some really cool stuff, too. Uh, and then Electro Voice engineers. So, I mean, I think that, you know, like. People ask all the time if I'm an if I'm a newbie, will I get something out of this? Oh yeah, uh, yes, yes you will. Uh, you will get stretched for sure. Uh, if you say, "Am I a pro? Am I going to get something out of this?" Absolutely. Uh, I don't think people keep coming back if that wasn't the case. Sure. Uh, I I would say it's um, there's a lot of content here and a lot of opportunities to learn in the classroom and outside just fellowship. Uh, you know, if you don't learn something, I mean, I I really think that's on you. Mm -hmm. Um, in the, in, during the event, there's those, there's some areas where you just know that you're going to get a lot of the, ah, oh, type of moments where people it, like a, a light goes on <laughs> lighting suppose you know, see what I did there. Um, that was good. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah so, but just where are those times? There's, there's like, I know when we get into this topic and we explain it, people are like, oh my gosh, why didn't I know that sooner? Well, I think that depends on the person, you know, I mean, uh, every, everybody has those, uh, you know, aha moments at different times. And it's cool to kind of watch the light bulbs go off, so to speak, uh, you know, or go on or whatever mm -hmm. it would be, but, you know, uh, but it happens at different times at different people. And I think one of my favorite things is watching people fellowship after the day, mm. you know, they're uh, in the breakfast area at the hotel, uh, or, you know, they're, they're going out to dinner and they're, they're sharing ideas and, you know, we've had attendees from Jamaica and Hawaii and the United Kingdom and, you know, other, uh, I mean, other, lots of, I can't remember the other countries and all over the United States. So you've got this tremendous sharing of ideas where, you know, people are saying, oh, you know, I, the, he talked about this and, but I, I, I do this, but I wonder if it could be, what if we did that? You know, and you watch this whole thing, just kind of like a snowball running down the hill. I, I said year two, I said, if we just had everybody in a room and we didn't say a word, this event is a great event. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Would well, you get the people just sharing like that and asking questions? And you know, yeah, I think the fact like, that we have all these world class presenters is just like an almost oh by the way, you know oh by the way we have a lot of you know, we have world class presenters. We have people who literally have invented this technology. In here the room, to talk you know? to you about it. So. Fun. Um, Will there be hands-on time where people actually can go and do some of these things in that, that format? Yes and no. It's not to the extent that I think, you know, I would love to have something where we could really dive in. And we've talked over the last 10 years about different ways where we could get people hands-on and doing this and doing that. And what we found is it just takes too much time. Mm. Uh, you know, we do have hands-on uh, things for like the uh, gain structure, you know, some mixing boards and things, and we work through some things and here, do it bad, here, do it good. Now you hear the difference, sure. you know? Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we've talked about in things past, wouldn't it be great if we just set up like a giant mock event? But, you know, what we felt there is that you're going to have your bold and um, 
you know, uh, ambitious people who are going to kind of take all the oxygen out of the room for everybody mm -hmm. else. So we said, well, let's just try to do as much tactile uh, classroom type stuff as we can. Uh, I mean, we have a lot of, you know, hands on product that we're, we're working with and things, but I, it's not the hands on that I would say it could be, but we couldn't do it in the amount of time or for the for the cost that we do. OK. You know? So there will be some opportunities to do if they have a question and such and can actually walk them through, i.e. the gain structure. Um, oh, yeah, that's one we do do hands on, you know, uh, because I think that's so critical. I, there's just so much more when you start talking about things like Resolume and Show Express and, you know, DMX and, and then, you know, in the audio realm, uh, you know, uh, it just there wouldn't really be time to do hands on in four days. Yeah. You know, we would have to, to really dilute the content. So we've tried to uh, package this in a way that the content is delivered uh, in, a, in a way that they can go home and do it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I, and I think and there is definitely time, you know, we've, we've got several factory people there that people are asking questions of, you know, during the break times, people are coming up and I've got, you know, uh, lights at the front of the room or whatever. And they're like, well, now show me what you're talking about here. And, you know, uh, that, that definitely occurs. Sure. Know? Um, so you're going to be at the Electro Voice headquarters. So that must mean that you guys are going to get to see and people can actually listen to the, the full line of EV gear. Yes, I'm so glad you brought that up. Uh, one of my favorite things to do at Electro Voice is to look at the uh, stuff that doesn't have a name yet. You know, the things that are still in development. Now, they uh, pretty carefully uh, hide most of that. But in years past at the symposium, they've they've taken advantage of having, you know, 50 uh, industry leaders. Let's be honest. If you come to this event, you're an industry leader. This, yeah. is, not, this is not for, the, the, you know, the faint of heart, right? So... Uh, they Electric Voice has definitely tapped into that to say, hey, we're working on something new. You interested in helping us out? You want to talk about it? You want to hear some things? You want to see some things? And people are always like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you also uh, get the tour of the engineering facilities. Our, our classes are held in their engineering facility uh, and uh, look at things like the anechoic chamber where, you know, they do uh, high precision testing, uh, you know, the structural testing, drop testing. Uh, you know, we take some speakers outside and do some distance demos and stuff, uh, you know, delay, that sort of thing. So I think it's really, really cool to see that these speakers aren't just sketched up on a napkin and made the next day. They, they see why it's a years long process and why, you know, when Electro Voice releases a speaker like the Everse, it's the industry crusher that it is. Mm -hmm. You know, that everybody goes, wow, why is that so much better than every other battery powered speaker? Well, you'll find out. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that always humors me a little bit, because obviously we carry a lot of brands of speakers and I love a lot of brands of speakers, uh, but it always humors me to see all the other brands of speakers in the EV engineering facility. Uh, <laughs> yep. I mean, they're not shy. They, yeah. You know, they know exactly what everybody else is making because they own one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as soon as, uh, you know, brand X releases a new speaker, EV goes and buys it. Yeah. You know? I mean, it... and then they say, how can we make it better? Mm -hmm. you know, how can we do better than those guys? You know? Yeah, is there something we can learn from this, and where does this take? And mm -hmm. for sure, no doubt they do head-to-head -head shootouts all the time. By the way, I don't know if I told you, uh, I passed my uh, listening test the other day. Uh, this was actually at Electro Voice. I was there, and they said, "Hey, we got something new, which nobody else knows about, and it hasn't been announced yet, so I can't tell you what it is." But uh, they said, "Hey, we we we've got this, and you know, we want you to do a blind listening test with these three speakers." Hmm. So they had three speakers, uh, and they had them covered by a black cloth. And the lights were down in the room, so you couldn't see through it. And, you know, it was very dim. And uh, they they played the speakers, and then they asked me to kind of rate them or whatever. And and uh, they said one of these speakers is an Electro Voice speaker. And I said, I think two of them are. I said, this one over here is definitely voiced like I would expect an Electro Voice speaker to sound. It's definitely voiced like that. I said, but the one over on the left has. I would say very characteristic voicing of Electro Voice. I said, but it, it, it kind of runs out of gas when you push it hard. It, it, it's still a good speaker, but it doesn't have the intelligibility or clarity of the higher end, JB, uh, excuse me, higher end Electro Voice speakers. I said, it, you know, you just start to lose some of the uh, intelligibility when you push it. I, mm -hmm. said, I, I said, if that's an EV, I would say that's probably ZLX, you know, which is their entry level. You yeah. know, it's still a good speaker, but you can hear the difference. You hear why, why this one's $500 mm -hmm. and this one's $1,000, you know. And I said, the middle one has ah, pretty, pretty tubby, kind of muddy, uh, definitely lacks clarity and the crispness. I said, that, that's, 
And I said what brand I thought it was. And they pulled the curtain back and I was 100% right. I <laughs> nailed it on there. <laughs> they were just looking at me and they were like, holy buckets. And I said, yeah, it was just the LX. And then it was a different brand that I'm not going to say who. And then it was the new one that you haven't heard of yet. So uh, it was it was great to just have all these engineers staring at me with their mouth down. Like, like he called the models out. Nice. <laughs> Happy to know I can still hear. Yeah, exactly. The, the hearing isn't completely beat up yet. Getting there, but not yet. It is getting there, yes. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit more about the lighting side of it. Now, there will be the... Uh, Chauvet is involved with the event. Mm -hmm. So yep. they're going to have their latest... Title, title sponsor, in fact. Yeah, they're going to have their latest and greatest and, and really talking about their... What is it? The IRL? I ILS. ILS, excuse me. Yeah. ILS. And several new things that just got released at NAM. Now, again, you have the one of the top dogs in Chevet product development is going to be there. Uh, he's the guy teaching the Show Express class. Uh, you'll have, of course, uh, our friend Jeff Short, who's a legendary marketing guy at Chevet, but you also have the national sales manager for Chevet Lighting. The, the, the national sales manager for Chevet DJ will be at the Lighting Symposium. So if that tells you how important this event is, to them that they would send their national sales manager to an event with 50 people mm -hmm. tells you a lot about who they think those 50 people are. Right. And they'll be bringing up their new items. And, and let, let's talk about a couple of you, because you just mentioned, of course, that uh, Chauvet had, had uh, brought, introduced some things at NAM this year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what products they're going to bring to the, to the symposium. I, 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 uh, I don't yet. Um, but I would fully expect them to want to show off the latest and greatest and to uh, also get some feedback from, again, leaders in the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what uh, What do you think of this? You know, mm -hmm. we headed in the right direction, you know. Uh, in the past, uh, Chevet has even brought a prototype or two to kind of gauge interest, you know. Do, sure. we, do we make this or don't we, you know. So, but I don't know what they're going to bring. I really don't. Hmm. I, I, I would guess so. It may, some of the new freedom stuff they're going to be, they would have there. If it, maybe not the brand new one, but they should have, because that's, I think they will. I think the new big, freedoms will be. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been in the beta testing for the uh, new Flarecon software, and I kind of held court the other day. I uh, feel like there's uh, some stuff that needs to happen, uh, and uh, it's it's coming. Uh, but again, I think what a great opportunity for people to uh, share that feedback. Um, yeah, I would say the new freedoms for sure. Probably the new uh, IP rated stuff. Um, those would be, I think, slam dunks, probably. The new battery-powered moving head, I think it's probably a, a slam dunk. So I don't know. I'll be curious myself. So let's just back take a step back we're, since we're in the lighting area. Lighting control. Mm -hmm. When, when you know, back in the day, uh, it was basically on-off switches, and you could, you know, the different, these very simple light controllers, and that's what existed. The DMX was there, but most DJs didn't get into that yet. Right. Now we've gotten into, you know, we, we had DMX controllers like bands had, and then they've gotten into software and things. Are we in a spot today where where it's easier to get into controlling your light show with these new technologies that uh, Chauvet and others are bringing out? Or are we still having to have a master's degree to understand what DMX is? No, it's never been easier. Uh, it's never been easier. And in fact, I we have a class at the symposium on DMX that gets really into like the physical layer and and a lot of the complexities of DMX. And, and I think people just kind of sometimes roll their eyes at it a little bit because now it's so easy. You know, they're like, I don't need to know all that stuff. And I'm like, well, you do when it doesn't work, you know, but uh, it's good to, good to know the, the foundation, right? Um, but uh, it's not to say that the class is not important, it is. But I think the, the underlying message here is, is, is that control has gotten so easy, uh, particularly with things like ILS and, and, you know, with Show Express and, and you know, Sound Switch and other things like that, that have just made this so incredibly easy to do that it almost happens without you thinking about why it happens. Hmm. So it really becomes maybe not quite, you know, plug and play, but it's, it's working it's as close. closer to that. Yeah, it's getting close. So <laughs> I think when you get into doing the stuff like, uh, you know, Jeremy does uh, and, and others and Brent, you know, that's where the ability to really create, you know, when the client says, we want this, uh, you know, to be able to do exactly that. Uh, let me find a picture of an event I just did uh, just last weekend. Uh, and I have a really exciting event coming up this weekend. I've got, uh, I've got Waz, Steve Wozniak, the... Uh, um, co-founder of apple is going to be there so, nice uh but let's see in this event uh which this is a uh view from the catwalk and i'll share it here but it just so happens to be that 
our logo happened to be on the center hung video board. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was, a, it was a well timed shot. I honestly didn't even plan it. <coughs> Excuse me. But what you can see here are these uh, trusses that are holding framing spots uh, to light up these silent auction tables for this event. Mm -hmm. And they wanted these to go off when the auction ended. So as each auction ended, the light for that table would go out. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, we've got some other things, uh, pretty, really a simple thing, honestly, a very simple event. You know, we got some lit up totems and, and then, um, uh, if we go to the, uh, stage, uh, let me try to find a picture of the stage here. Uh, and maybe I don't have a good one. Let's see if I do. Okay, this will have to do. Uh, you can see, you know, yeah. for the uh, for this, we've got, uh, you know, we've got a, a, a LED video wall there. We've got projector screens here and here that are showing the uh, live auction results, also feeding these TVs. Um, and we've got, uh, there's a lighting truss you can barely see. Right there. And where's yeah. the spot in which is the best place to drop a cupcake from? I think we did that from right about here. Right there, there. Okay, the cupcake, yeah, up on the, yeah, that was a <laughs> spot. Yep. <laughs> maybe, maybe red wasn't the best choice of colors for that. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, but the, the, the ability to do exactly what they want, exactly when they want it was essential with this. And uh, it, we honestly, we did that with Show Express. Mm -hmm. you know, we have MA2 lighting consoles. Um, we just didn't feel the need to bring one out for this. We're like, sure. gosh, this is super easy. So, you know, you're starting to move into things where this this could be done, you know, really, this is not the kind of production event that, that you know, anybody else couldn't do. I mean, probably the, the most difficult part of this was the rigging, you yeah. know, as far as that goes, which, you know, historically, we've talked about rigging and things at the symposium, too. We don't have a class on that this year, but... Uh, anyway, the, the premise is kind of the same, mm -hmm. you know. Nice. Um, when the group, for those of you uh, out there, let's see, do I still have it? Yes. I'll show that one more time. That is the Facebook group where you can pop out there and you can uh, get, you can reach out to Ben and uh, find out more information and he'll get you connected uh, with Mike. Otherwise, the Facebook group, you go out there and you'll find uh, a lot of uh, information and different things there and you can kind of bounce around and reach out. Uh, for more information on the Lighting Symposium, which is coming up here at the beginning of May. I'm going to find a picture of one of our uh, mouse quit working. Maybe I won't. Uh. <laughs> you find a picture of one of our graduating classes here. Uh, I'm, sort of, I'm already getting nostalgic about it. You know? it's, <laughs> it's, uh, not even happened and I'm already nostalgic because, like I said, it's uh, definitely going to be a break after this one if we do any more at all. Um, all right, let's share this real quick. There you are. So, yeah, it was kind of fun. I, I don't have a picture from the 2020 class, uh, but uh, anyway, I see our viewer who works at Blue Bunny in the picture too, but I'm not going to point him out. So, uh -huh. uh, yeah, excellent. Well, that's good. Good stuff. And again, they, if you eat all the frosting of the cupcake, it becomes a muffin. And muffins are healthy. Yes, that's right, John. And if you eat all the frosting off the cupcake, that gives you the opportunity to go get more frosting. I'm totally down to do the uh, cupcake drop, but it, it, my, my rules are simple, John. You have to come film it in person. <laughs> uh, get a couple of camera angles, and we'll do yeah. it right. And do, I'll, do the cupcake. I'll get out there on the beam. And then uh, drop the first one. We'll see what the splat is. And then after that, it becomes a challenge. Like, now, Ken, open your mouth. Can you get, catch? Uh, for those that are wondering how that gets up there, I do have a picture of, of me uh, up there doing this. So we can, uh, I'm just sort of planting the seed here for the cupcake. You know, to say, <laughs> look, we, we, can, we can do this. So uh, there we go. This is yours truly right there. Yeah. So we can, we can drop that cupcake. I'm yeah. down for that. Yeah. Right up there, right above the, well, not, there isn't ice there at that time. That is the hockey arena there in Bemidji. Yep, it is. The uh, uh, dasher boards are right there. The, they go right to the edge of the bleachers. Yeah. 
Good, good stuff. We're going to wrap things up for tonight. Thank you guys for being with us this evening. And about 15 minutes tonight, you can go out to djntv.com slash chill. Well, you can do it right after the show is done. That is where the uh, crew is going to be getting together for tonight's Tuesday night music show. Brian and I see John's, uh, John's there and there'll be other folks just jump in there and you can hang out and they're going to record a session kind of talking about music and things. And then after that, it's uh, kind of an open chat night. Kind of like once the education is done at the Lighting Symposium where you can get together and talk and learn from each other and share ideas. It's a great, great hallway time to uh, to connect like that. So um, links again are in the chat. So if you don't see it, just scroll down a little bit in the chat to find the, uh, the Facebook group. And you can go out there and uh, read more about uh, some of the different posts and such that are there. We're talking about the upcoming Lighting and Audio Symposium. So... Yeah, we have somebody. Uh, Kat, our director of marketing, is apparently watching tonight. She says, "I'm all in for the cupcake drop. I'll film that." <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh! Do you think they'd get upset if we would like you drop the cupcake and I'm there with like a a tennis racket? To... <gasps> no, I think I think we'd just be disappointed if you miss. Yeah, no, not with my incredible cat-like reflexes. Nice. Well, I think you get. You know what? I wonder might be some rules we'd have to work around here because you know of course that is the home of Bemidji State University's Division One hockey program true and I've seen those players do some incredible things uh you know practicing their eye hand coordination is really something else I well, yeah, much they... better than mine well it's much better than, I mean let's be honest yeah, it's way tough. better than mine. yeah 20 percent of these kids are going to go play pro somewhere I mean it's much better than 99.9 percent of the world that's just how it is uh I mean some of the stuff I've seen was pretty extraordinary I saw a kid uh uh, two kids it was on the ice all it was one was at the uh, you know roughly the uh, blue line and the other one was standing in front of the net but he was facing the net and the guy at the blue line was firing wrist shots from the blue line and the guy facing the net was knocking the deflecting the pucks with his stick by watching the reflection in the glass in front of him <laughs> I'm like that's not human like that's not that's not even it's not human like that's some spider-man crap right oh, there you goodness. know uh, you know, but these kids are just goofing around. He's, you know, he's just a 22 year old, 20, 20 year old college kids goofing around, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but that's just the kind of eye hand coordination they have and yeah. reaction time they have. And anyway, we should have, we'll see if it's possible to maybe have one of them, uh, you know, down there with a hockey stick as we're dropping cupcakes or something. Yeah, that would out. be much more appropriate than a test racket. I know that if we wouldn't get if we wouldn't break like some NCAA rules, I know these kids would be down for it. <laughs> yeah, just to make the mess. Splatter cupcakes and not get in trouble? Are you kidding me? Somebody also clean us up. Let's do it. Oh, oh no, they, that's they're not going to do that. So. Yeah, well, they yeah they wouldn't clean it up. That'd be our job to have to clean it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's who's going to get stuck with yeah. you and me. Yeah, fun. Well, again, thank you guys for being with us tonight. We'll be back again next week. You guys can check us out on Tuesday night. Hopefully, we'll be able to jump back into uh, talking a little bit more about some lighting topics that we wanted to hit. Uh, maybe before, like in a couple of weeks, Ben will be in the city. So we'll be having to get our topics all down before that. So <laughs> once again, thank you guys for being with us, and we will catch you next time. Good night, everybody. Uh -huh.